Good morning! Today is October 30, 2023, which marks the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections. This is the first time in five years the Philippines will be holding its nationwide Barangay and SK polls to elect its officials at the Barangay level, the smallest political unit in the country. Barangay and SK elections were last held in 2018. The next elections were supposed to be held in May 2020 but were postponed to December 2022 and then to October 2023. Our reporters are on the field to cover the ongoing elections. Joining us uh, from Taguig City is Gina Mangaluz and uh, live from Quezon City is Chari Abar. Let's head first to Quezon City. Here's Chari Abarka to give us an update. Chari, what's the situation there right now? Neil, as early as 6 a.m. in the morning, or 6 a.m., uh, there's already a long line of voters here in Pasong Tamo Elementary School in Quezon City. Voting, however, officially started at 7 o'clock in the morning, exactly at the scheduled time of the Commission on Elections. According to the residents, it is better for them to line up earlier to avoid long lines. Data from the Commission on Elections show that the number of regular voters here at Pasong Tamo Elementary School is at 25,698. Meanwhile, according to Comelec Chair George Garcia, there are also 7,729 registered voters in the area who can vote in the SK elections. Neil, to recall, Pasong Tamo Elementary School is also one of the three polling precincts designated by the Comelec to conduct the automated BSKE. Unlike other villages in the country that used manual voting system, this voting center utilized vote counting machines. This is part of the Comelec's preparation and plan to make BSKE fully automated by 2025. Neil, some of the ones that caught our attention here at the center are first, the distribution of campaign materials outside the polling precinct, which was previously banned by the Comelec, is still rampant. Some voters also had difficulty finding their names in the voters list posted at the polling precinct. Several facilities here are also not PWD friendly, causing difficulties for some voters. Among those who braved the odds was 20-year-old Irene Loang who, was, who has mild Down syndrome. Irene was accompanied by her, her, her parents, 54-year-old Juliet and 60-year-old Roldan. In an interview prior to casting their votes, Juliet told Inquire.net that she wants her daughter to gain experience in voting. As what challenges they endured to get to Pasong Tamo Elementary School, Juliet said they were confused at first as to where their designated polling center is. Back to you, Neil. Chari, a few questions. Ano, uh, you noted na ilan sa mga facilities dyan sa skulahan na yan. Ano, are not a PWD friendly. Can you give us more details on that? Ano, may mga napansin ka ba na nahirapan, especially sa stairs, no? lagi yung problema tuwing eleksyon talaga na medyo wala tayong mga uh, talagang kailangan in umakyat pa doon sa stairs para lang makapunta sa kanilang mga polling precinct. Yes, Neil, kagaya nga ng na-point out mo, isa yung hagdan sa mga naging uh, um, challenges sa mga kababayan natin na bumoto, na may kapansanan. Uh, isa rin si Irene sa mga nahirapan, especially sa ramp dito, kasi wala po siyang ramp for PWDs. Mm -hmm, and ayun mm -hmm. po, bukod po sa hagdan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Chari, may mga napansin ka din dyan ano, na namimigay ng mga anong tawag doon para sample balot sa labas ng school. Kasama ito doon sa pinagbabawal na COMELEC na bawal na kasi dapat mga panya at this point. Tama ba yun? Yes, Neil, exactly. Uh, hiningi na rin natin ng komento ni COMELEC Chair Garcia mm -hmm. regarding this pero hindi pa sila nagpapaunlak ng interview as of press time. Uh -huh. Pero si mahalagang paalala yan para sa mga kandidato, para sa pagkakapitan at mga konsihal. Kasama na rin yung mga SK chairman at councilors no, na bawal na dapat mangampanya at this point. Yes, Neil. Uh -huh. Maraming salamat, Chari. That's Chari Abarca live from Quezon City. Now, let's head uh, to uh, Taguig City where... Uh, Voters from the so-called Embo Barangays will be voting for the first time as Taguig City residents. Our reporter, Jean Mangalut, is live 
thrown at a gauge city. G, how is the situation there? Neil, like you said, this is the first time that these residents are voting under the city of the gig. If you recall that the Supreme Court had settled the territorial dispute between Makati and Taguig, ruling in favor of Taguig. Last April, it decided that Fort Bonifacio as well as 10 other barangays are now under the city of Taguig. Now, we spoke to some voters in the Sembo Elementary School who had very strong opinions about the matter, saying that they feel uncertain about the change in leadership. However, it's still important for them to vote in this BSKE election. Nung hawak pa ng Makati, okay naman din. Kasi PWD ako, priority. Hindi naman namin inasahan yun. Ngayon, nakuha kami ng tagib. Sunod na lang kami sa kanila kung, kung ano yung gusto. Ano, maganda naman ang, pat, ang, ano, ang mga patakaran nila, Binay. Lahat ng mga project nila, tinutupad nila, ginagawa nila. Eh, kung lilipat yan sa tagig, baka naman, baka naman yung mga beneficyo namin na ano, hindi nila ma, ano, ma, ma, maibigay. Them if they felt any differences between voting under Taguig City than in Makati, they said there was no big difference. According to voters, the same people who ran in the last elections are the ones who are running again this year with the addition of new faces. We also spotted someone handing out what appeared to be campaign posters inside of the school. Now, remember that the Comalek has prohibited campaigning on voting day itself, so no one should be holding political rallies or advertising any candidates of any sort. We're currently here in the Fort Bonifacio High School, another EMBO school. It's a much larger voting precinct and there's a constant flow of people. According to Barangay Elections, an estimated 20,000 people will cast their vote in this high school. Back to you, Neil. Mm -hmm. uh, Jean, uh, just uh, one question for you. Ano, uh, kakatapos lang ng report itong si Chari from Quezon City and in her report, she also noted na mayroong mga namimigay nitong uh, sample ballot. You noted in your report as well na mayroong din namimigay ng mga campaign materials. Again, a reminder, this is prohibited by the COMELEC. Yes, this is... Mm -hmm. uh, Jean, mayroon we're cutting in and out, no, dito sa iyong audio. But, uh, Jean, another question for you is, kamusta naman yung paghahanap ng mga botante dyan sa kanilang presinto? Meron ba? Kasi may mga nakikita tayong report, ano, na may mga kababayan tayo na hindi nila makita yung pangalan nila doon sa mga listahan na nakapaskil sa mga paaralan. Yes, Neil, actually, kanina may nakausap kaming... Um, per, uh, babae na ayaw lang magpa-interview pero sinabi niya na nagunat uh -huh. siya, matagal na siyang taga Sembo Barangay pero bigla siyang linipat ng voting precinct na napunta siya sa ibang high school napunta siya sa ibang Embo High School uh -huh. kaya nagunat uh -huh. siya, alatang medyo galit siya so sa tingin niya baka may kinalaman yung Taguig City doon so we can't say for sure kung yun talaga ang kaso dito Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, maybe we can also remind our uh, kababayans or mga registered voters natin that uh, they can check uh, their uh, precincts ahead of time before heading dito sa kanilang uh, mga eskwelahan through the online precinct finder of the Commission on Elections. Definitely, Neil. Available naman po online ang um, inyong precinct. Just have your details prepared. <laughs> Jean, another question. Ano, pagdating naman doon sa... Uh, mga accessibility ng ating mga presinto. Uh, may mga na-observe ka ba dyan na problema? Kasi ito yung talagang laging pinag-uusapan even sa during national elections, hindi lamang ngayong uh, barangay and SK elections. No, this problem isn't new. Itong accessibility ng ating mga facilities for senior citizens and the persons with disabilities. Ako, tama ka dyan, Neil. Perennial problem nga yung accessibility. Um, kanina may mga nakausap kaming mga senior citizens and PWDs. Mabuti na lang tinudungan sila ng mga ibang poll watcher doon. Pero yung ibang mga senior citizens natin, nahirapan makahanap ng assistance na tatakot sila. Baka kailangan nila umakyat pa sa second floor. Um, doon sa Sembo Elementary School, nakita namin isa lang yung rampa. Kaya eh, maraming mga, na, mga naka-wheelchair. 
Uh-huh. Sa Fort Bonifacio High School, medyo mas malaki, medyo mas equipped sila. Mada- kada entrance, nakikita natin, meron ng okay. PWD ramp. So, mukhang may accessibility pa rin naman. Uh-huh. There are efforts to make the facilities accessible. Uh, maraming salamat, Jean. That's Jean Magaluz from Taguig City. President Bongbong Marcos has cast his vote in his hometown, Ilocos Norte, for the barangay at sanggol ang kabataan elections. As seen on a radio television, um, Malacanang live stream, Marcos entered the Mariano Marcos Memorial Elementary School in Batac City at 7.04 a.m. It's the same school where he cast his vote during the 2022 national elections. Marcos later says in an interview that the government aims to immediately ease tensions brought by the Barangay and SK elections, especially since it is held at a very intimate personal level. That's why, uh, ang sa aming assessment, eh, kumisan nagiging napakainit ang Barangay election dahil talagang crucial yan at uh, it is uh, held at a very intimate personal level. And that's why sometimes nagkakainit na ng, ng husto, kaya yun ang ating gustong iwasan. In other news, the State Weather Bureau says the low-pressure area of eastern Visayas is seen to bring cloudy skies and rains in at least three regions of the country in the next few days. The LPA is located inside the Philippine Area of Responsibility some 995 kilometers east of Visayas as of 3 a.m. According to Pag-asa, the LPA so far has a small chance of developing into a tropical cyclone. The State Weather Bureau expects the LPA to move in the Visayas and Bicol region, bringing rains in Visayas and southern Luzon. The LPA is also expected or predicted to bring overcast skies and rains in Metro Manila, Calabar Zone, and Mimaropa by Wednesday or Thursday. And these are the stories you need to know today. I'm Neil Mercado. Follow Inquire.net on Facebook, X, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Reddit. For more stories, visit Inquire.net. Good morning.